Welcome to another Jade Talks Cars. Um, a bit of a, not a bit of a different one, but I'm just kind of trying to think up of subject matter. Um, I've just had my front, um, well, my splitter upgrade uh, delivered this morning. Um, I'll show you that later in this uh, JTC. Um, my car's been sat around for a few days because I've been quite busy with quite a few things, uh, mostly like family business in terms of visiting family and weddings and all sorts of stuff like that. But yeah, so a little bit of an update on my car uh, recently. Um, I don't know how much you pay attention to other content on my channel, but recently I drove over to Sunderland and um, en route I hit what must have been an absolute crater in the road and it has done some sort of damage to the car um, I haven't had a proper look underneath so during this uh, vlog I will well during this content I mean it's not necessarily a vlog vlog but you know what I mean it's living with a 20 year old car and um, during this content we will have a look under the car and um, it will be going into the garage next week and um, to have what is suspected a tie rod arm or tie rod bush and um, because every time I now hit a bump there's a god awful knock underneath my side of the car uh, which is usually where the mount point of the back end of the tie rod arm um, so we'll be seeing if it's that if that's the case I'm gonna look at upgrading my bushes um, to polymer bushes on the front because they're more durable than your standard OEMs um, I had somebody comment with regards to oh well you're modifying the car you're not actually you know you're increasing its performance and this that and the other I just want to kind of nip that in the bud now um, any modification I have a rule of where there's a repair there's a modification but people have the misconception of modifications are always for performance not always I am doing modifications to this car purely for lifestyle, purely for ease of use and purely for the sake of this car being and remaining practical. Um, I would love for it to be a cookie car but where on today's roads am I going to use that? Honestly. Um, so there's absolutely no point adding performance to the car purely on the basis of it is a workhorse I travel all over the UK for work um, and stuff like that it is not a recreational car um, you could argue well you're on about taking it to the Nordschleife I am but the way Europe is so stringent and especially um, Germany is very strict with as far as motoring is concerned it may not be this car I may end up getting another car and I may modify that performance wise for such an adventure so um, yeah having I've had a few comments of going yeah but you're modifying the car to make it perform better well yeah that's the whole point of performance but it's how you use that performance and the truth of the matter is is the performance that I am doing to this car is for practicality for ease of use for dealing with today's road well I say today's roads and he harks on about damage um, today's motoring if you will yeah I just want to nip that in the bud because that's irked me a little bit of uh, oh you just know better than everyone else you're modifying your car to you know to go faster and stuff like that and it, no not really no 
and um, if I'd done that I would have done a performance remap and not an economy remap the purpose of my content is to improve your older vehicle and still make it financially viable and make it efficient in areas where otherwise it will cost you money and um, so yeah that that's pretty much the long and short of it so with regards to this car anyway so what's going to happen is we're going to get the upgrade the bushes and tie rod if that needs repairing um, if it ends up being something else then it'll be something else it'll be what it'll be so other little cosmetic jobs shall we say just to keep certain Karens happy um, I'm going to be upgrading the front splitter to a detachable part um, where I've got to develop or work out a way of having the splitter part added on that it will remain stable secure and it will not come off down the motorway so to speak that's normally quite difficult because usually they're reinforced by stick tape and stuff like that uh, 3m tape and everything so it might not be a detachable it might end up being a permanent thing but then again if it ends up being a, becoming a permanent thing I want it to be fitted on in a way where it still is practical still serves a purpose um, going back to my point on aero when you're playing with aero you know you are doing it at a risk of drag um, drag is sometimes bad when you're trying to be efficient um, so again it's working out it, it, working out the compromise between drag and efficiency so that's going to be part of that project whether I include that on this uh, content or not I don't know I, I'm, I'm painting by numbers a little bit with this um, with this video other stuff to tackle and um, there's going to be more content on Helen's car um, I'm going to be it's going to be lowered 40 mil and um, the shock absorbers rear shock absorbers because it's like a bobbing boat back there um, however since putting the car back to E5 fuel um, the car has been driving superb it the economy has improved and also I might add as well the aero that I put on the roof and the um, well the diffuser um, actually has made the back of the car quite stable um, it is a very little detail and it's not a massive lot but I felt that the car um, handles a lot better um, it just it doesn't feel it doesn't sound windy and um, like there's air buffering underneath the car um, which is something I didn't notice until now so yeah it's um, no it, it's, it's brilliant it's doing its job um, so I'm gonna move forward on um, come on you give way to the right <laughs> So I give way to the right and the guy's looking to the left. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, going back to my point, the, the, we're going to be lowering the car, so it would be uh, lower center of gravity. Um, also as well, reinforce the Bilstein B4s. Um, we would have gone B6s, but we're not trying to add performance. We're just trying to basically replace OEM with a better manufacturing part. Um, based upon Misha Sheridan's recommendation not him directly to me but through his content so yeah so that car's getting improved um, other jobs on it is going to include um, we're going to um, wrap the roof um, so pearlescent wrap on the roof uh, we're going to keep the car silver but with the Powermax products that I have recently um, received and um, we're going to be detailing the car and hopefully you know get a little bit more out of the cars paintwork and everything 
So, um, yeah, there's, there's quite a little bit to report. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy so far with things that we're doing um, and a little bit of progression. Um, also, as well, I want to uh, note on JTOT's cars, I will be doing features on other people's cars so I will be going around speaking to people or arranging uh, dates to go and see their car and um, do it like a featured part where we talk about their car and the, the cost of living with it now there will be cars that will be modified there will be standard cars there will be classic cars um, basically the whole idea is to give a rounded ish understanding of living with an older vehicle um, now I've had a few people with newer cars asking me what my big problem is with new cars I don't have a problem I just feel as though government mandates and incentivizing people into newer vehicles because of and I'm going to put it out there a group of tree huggers um, I feel that it's not the best way to do because end of day not everybody can dip their hand in their pocket and invest in a newer vehicle um, I understand that we are trying to save the planet but I believe in natural order um, so what I mean by that is everything is created to be destroyed everything lives to die um, so I am of that mindset and I feel that um, preservation actually in my opinion does more damage than good because when you create a solution you create further problems so that's my opinion on that it's not everybody's you may not share it I do apologize but that that is how I look at things so yeah the asking why I don't why I have a problem with uh, newer cars um, I don't I simply don't um, I think some of the newer cars just some absolute beautiful cars especially coming out and on the roads but from someone who has lived with clapped out bangers and this is my caveat um, I've learned that there's more value in an older car than there is in a newer car a newer car um, serves a purpose for that period an older car serves a purpose for a prolonged period providing you look after it and you understand its worth um, so that's why I have the attitude on it like I do with regards to other shows car shows and other content um, I just want to uh, note that um, you know that there are a few events that I would like to go to but because of my music schedule um, as you notice on Vader Monkey TV I am quite heavily involved in the UK dance industry um, it all depends on whether I have a free week to attend that and whether my budget and finances allow um, so I've noticed that Mark McCann's got an event coming up and also um, I've noticed that Adam C has moved his event to the 6th of July um, I am still considering going to that um, but at the same time you know it's not really a priority and everything for me right now I'm using this opportunity for this bit of gab and blabber um, because my car's been sat around for nearly a week uh, because I've really been working quite hard from home um, so I've not had the opportunity to get out on the roads and drive around and secondly obviously like I said earlier um, I've been at weddings and family arrangements and other personal matters and stuff like that so I've not really needed to use my car so um, <clears throat> so I'm taking this opportunity to give it a drive I do miss driving this car I do absolutely love this car 
um, I do love the fact that it saves me a lot of money every time I drive the car but at the same time you know old car syndrome comes in as well especially when your local government doesn't look after the roads um, in other news China have uh, developed a diesel engine which is more efficient and is more apparently quote better for the environment now how true this is I don't know but apparently um, it has been approved under the German vehicle um, sort of standards agency otherwise known to people as TUV or TUV if you very simplistic this is good news um, because it could be the saving grace of diesel engines um, if this is developed further um, obviously we know that diesels do produce more emissions than petrol or hybrid but at the same time you know it's more a case of is it going to be financially viable now if it's stating that it's viable for climate that's great but if it's um, more of a case of a scientific experiment then uh, as somebody who again champions older cars and diesels I remain on the fence so we'll see what develops from that in other news as well, um, Toyota, Subaru and I, I think Mazda are bucking the trend with regards to electric uh, mobility. Um, developing electric, and electric cars actually is of a greater cost than is made out through government mandates and your eco driven um, organizations to me this is good news because as much as I understand the green benefits of electric cars to a degree it's they're not that economical because of the pollution required to harvest the uh, lithium so a little bit on the fence as far as that's concerned however um, Toyota Subaru and um, Mazda are developing the hydrogen engines they are really focusing on the hydrogen route now I have said previously I am holding out for hydrogen because I am a combustion engine person and I will not be swayed otherwise and if we were to give up diesel and petrol engines hydrogen is a very strong and uh, fantastic route to go in my opinion so yeah so with that they're going to be developing more on the combustion engines um, also with the carbon capture fuels as well um, engines based around that um, it's a good thing it's a positive thing and uh, I am looking forward to this coming about the other reason that to be noted as well is there's not as big of an uptake on electric vehicles as it is has been uh, I don't, I'm not entirely sure which media channels have said that electric vehicles are outselling Pet, um, combustion engines but that's not the case um, basically you've got combustion engines which are still selling they're still selling diesels they're still selling petrols but there are more automatics being sold than the manual the manual seems to be the, it will be a dying if not dead breed and that's a shame really because Based upon my previous um, gripe, um, driving is a skill, not convenience. And automatics kind of drive that, um, 
that mentality. Um, obviously, there are people that are physically unable to change gear or it's quite difficult for them. And electric cars, you can't put a manual gearbox on them because it just, it just simply doesn't work for the sake of a few cogs and everything. Um, so, I think based on that, you know, we could see not the death, but the demise of the uh, manual gearbox. Manual gearbox basically, again, emphasizes the point on the skill of driving and understanding how a vehicle works and making that vehicle move in a way where, you know, it is very, it's fluid. You know, you become one with the vehicle. Um, whether that's driving spirited or whether that's just driving complying with the national speed limits. So, yeah, that'll be a very bad day. I mean, my car is semi-auto and I always drive it in manual mode so that I still have the uh, manual mentality because of the fact that, um, well, if I had a full manual, um, you know, I'd be happy, but the reason why this is semi-auto is my partner has an automatic license. She struggled to learn a, um, with the manual gearbox um, due to anxieties and, again, situations beyond her control. So she's on, this is a semi-automatic, so I can still drive it in manual, still drive like it's a manual car, uh, just without the clutch pedal. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, just drive it where I can drive it economically. Um, but yeah, going back to the point of manuals, uh, you know, I'm sure somebody's going to comment and go, well, if you're sort of champion manual gearboxes and skill of driving, why don't you get yourself a manual? I will. I will get another manual car, but at the moment, because again, back to my point. This car is the workhorse, and if my partner needs it for long distance driving to and from her mother's, um, or for any other reason because it is a bigger car than hers, then uh, it has to be an automatic, which can be driven in automatic mode. But because it has semi-automatic facility, I can drive it in manual. I mean, I want to upgrade to uh, the flappy paddle steering wheel in this. But well, that's going to be quite an expense, so that might be a later mod. Um, so yeah, uh, so ma manual gearboxes are on the demise. Um, few manufacturers are persisting with hydrogen engine development to keep the combustion engine or some form of a combustion engine alive. And China has developed a diesel far more economically friendly than what I'm currently driving. So those are the three uh, areas that um, have been brought to my attention and I thought I'd give it a mention in this video and um, yeah. Right, so another package has arrived and um, this is for the Audi. I've been waiting on this for a while now and uh, I've ordered myself another front splitter um, reason being is I'm going to do something different with the front um, I'm just need to figure out how I'm going to do this but I want to create a detachable uh, front splitter kit for the car um, now the problem when you do a front splitter is when you've put it on it needs to be very secure um, but driving around with it on I don't know whether that's going to be a good idea or not. So this is a little bit of an experiment program uh, project, um, but should be fun. So yeah, I've just been busy. I should have videoed some of this, but I've been so busy with uh, other stuff and other projects as well. Um, but I thought I'd give you a quick update on what's going on. So I have attached the, uh, excuse the crude tape measuring. I couldn't find any, um, what do you call masking tape to measure it properly uh, but I've basically put everything together 
Um, I've bolted where I think this fold should be so I can adopt the position or adjust the position of the outer part of the splitter. Um, this is just to give the car a bit more of an aggressive look. Um, I know I did say I was going to make it detachable but um, I've had a look underneath the car and uh, it looks more of a complicated job than I thought it was going to be. So, so crudely put together I'm just in the process of now building sort of a bracket kit um, just to fit it to the side of the um, bumper or the bottom part of the bumper just to keep it secure at the end and then uh, I just need to work out how I'm fitting the middle um, because the middle is quite flat planed um, so I'm gonna have to create a bracket or something because I've already got an S4 split but that's fiberglass so I'm gonna have to build something or create some sort of fixing that I can attach from underneath the car um, and then obviously I'm gonna have to tape along the line and it's gonna have to probably be now a permanent fixture which um, I'm not too bothered it gives it a bit more of an aggressive look um, whether it serves any aero purpose I'll see I mean as I said previously where there's uh, where there's drag the efficiency kind of doesn't really make sense but see it's all experimentation you know it's an old car it's not like I can do it get it wrong and get it fixed on warranty anymore so it's all an experiment this now um, see how it turns out right so to put a bracket on there I'll be building some sort of an attachment bracket which will attach to the bumper trim um, the position of this is just so that it does the job and obviously I'm going to work out the secure fixings along the main flat pane um, but I'll probably stick it and then work out the uh, fixings somehow um, but yeah so preparation is key they say right mm. so I'm gonna have a look underneath the car and see what's happening with it okay so let's have a look at suspension arm those bushes don't seem too bad I'm just trying to get bits to them let's have a look at these back bushes it's uh that arm seems okay I'm not sure if I can see the other arm um, that's a bit further back somewhere let's have a look somewhere around there maybe any knocking whatever is that damage no so I'm just trying to work it all out really with the area you'll probably see a lot of just chassis parts and stuff like that but yeah it uh, doesn't seem too much fun so yeah those are the front arms um, I don't know if you can see with the bush the light on this has kind of died out a little bit now so I'm kind of going a little bit blind um, the back arms don't seem too bad but I think the big look will be up at the top suspension maybe so uh, yeah it's a um, bit of a strange one so yeah if I could tell between here what we're doing what I would but it could quite possibly be upper arm issue um, it's looking to me like the bush has gone actually on that arm which is never good so We'll have to uh, figure that out. And those bushes seem okay. So yeah, it's your rear, it's my rear tie rod arm by the looks of it. And the bush has gone there. So yeah, that's never great. 
So what have we learned today? Okay, right. Well, it's definitely one of the suspension arms. That's the obvious thing. It's definitely one of the arms at the rear of the suspension. Um, obviously, as you can see from earlier footage that where I'm supposed to be getting joints and bushes, I ended up getting chassis parts and suspension arms. Um, and then you probably saw somewhere up into the deepest delves of the engine bay, which I do apologise. I kind of winged it because I couldn't get underneath the car and to put a ramp to get it on the ramp would have been a bit awkward because of where it was parked. So I kind of had to improvise there. But um, the car's in the garage on the Tuesday. I am recording this on the Saturday um, for this sort of episode of JTalks Cars, if you want, for a better world. Um, so I'm going to leave this at this point because... There's such a lot to get through and I've got loads more footage which will take it longer than how I prefer to make my content. Um, so with regards to the front splitter, again, not got really any time to include it in this. So that's going to be in the follow up to this. Um, so we've got a front splitter to put on, updates and find out more with regards to suspension. And also as well, um, just a bit more with regards to other things that affect, may affect, you know, keeping an older car compared to owning a newer car and new technology, which could be sort of evolving motoring on stuff like that. Hopefully within combustion, you know, I'm just say, putting it out there. Anyway, um, I'm rabbiting on a little bit, so I'm going to say please comment like subscribe to, to my content i mean i appreciate any input any mechanics out there you have maybe a better idea of what i should be looking for or anybody any audi owners a4 b6 owners b7 owners that know obviously are more mechanically minded than myself please um give me the heads up and maybe advise me in some way um please put them in the comments there i do have social channels as well so they will they're always linked on my content and um yeah let's um learn about this problem um evolve with this problem and hopefully uh you know it's not going to be expensive um i know the purpose of this content is living with an older car and offsetting costs but sometimes you do get maintenance issues that do arise through your environment's negligence, shall we say. Um, I mean, I repeat again, this problem has been caused through what felt like a crater in the middle of the road whilst I was driving to film an event. Um, so, yeah, I'm now going to figure out what the problem is, fix it. I'm, dry, I'm going over to Hartlepool the following week. So this is recorded on Saturday. Next Saturday, I've got to be in Hartlepool. So I want to get to the bottom of this and get this sorted. Um, so again, please comment, like, subscribe. See you in the follow-up to this. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Ciao bien. Lagging whilst gaming? Out of steam after a long day at work and you want to go out raving? or just need something to get you through your grueling day. Dubby Energy, a healthier alternative to the off-the-shelf brands. Dubby is packed full of the important aminos and vitamins that canned energy drinks don't provide. This product doesn't contain artificial additives and is also sugar-free, maltodextrin and keto-free. One tub on average is cheaper than consuming two cans per day of the off-the-shelf brands. Order your Dubby Energy via their website at dubby.gg and use my promo code VaderMonkeyJ to get yourself 10% off your order. Keeping yourself energised doesn't have to be unhealthy.